Thanks for tuning in to Locked in the Green Room podcast. Um, I'm basically chatting to different musicians who are all at home, just like everybody, and just finding out what they're up to, seeing how they're doing, seeing how they're feeling about everything. Please make sure you press the subscribe button down there or there. I can't remember which one. Uh, Yeah, click the little bell next to it and click all notifications. Today I'm chatting with John Woff, who plays saxophone with the 1975 and... uh, we used to go to college together and I thought it'd be really interesting to hear what he has to say about suddenly not being on tour anymore. So please hope you enjoy John Wolf. We were in your bedroom in Leeds and we were recording violin for a film project. Yeah. Um, and we were with a really terrible mic situation dangling. That's what I remember. Yeah. It was my little saxophone mic clipped yeah. onto a, a lamp. That's yeah. that was that I could do, and I probably paid you about ten pounds. Yeah, I, I, I and I was know. happy with that ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, it's been a long time. But you know, I've just started this this podcast, and I'm trying to get like just I'm just trying to get chatting to different musicians from loads of different uh, like walks of music or di- different genres, different styles, uh, different people who are doing different things in the world of music at the moment or as it happens not doing anything in the world <laughs> and just seeing how everyone's doing and i don't know and seeing what what you know basically my question to you is like what were you doing two weeks ago and now what are you doing yeah so we um we just come off tour we had a, a uk run that's with so- the 1975 right yes that's right yeah and so fortunately we were able to finish that UK run and there was no real uh, issues at all ah. at that stage. There was obviously the, the Corona thing it had kicked off, um, you know, a lot earlier than that, though it hadn't become so much of a threat um, as it is now. Yeah. And so we were on tour, we'd finished the UK run, that was great. And then um, <clears throat> we had maybe six months or so of, promo work booked in. um fairly sporadic dates but um albeit um fixed dates in our diary and yeah. uh, doing tv shows and that kind of thing to mm-hmm. to push uh, the 1975's new album right and then that was going to lead into a a, a two month us tour at the back end of april mm-hmm. and so obviously in light of everything that's been going on that all of that work has been um God. has been postponed yeah yeah and um and so it is pretty crazy how even just within the past, with, with, within the space of a couple of weeks, um, everything's been turned upside down. And um, yeah, yeah it's, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, so now, so you, that's what you were doing. And then we, got, we obviously got told, well, we're, I don't know actually where you are. Are you, are you in the UK? Y- yeah, I'm yeah. in London. Yeah. All right. Oh, nice. Um, well... Yeah, we've been told stop everything and and stay indoors. So what, what's going on? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, well, um, I I'm doing some Skype tuition. Nice. Uh, really, that was the first thing that came to mind when all of the the live work and the gigs and everything once once they were pulled. Mm-hmm. Um, my my first reaction was to try and book in some Skype tuition. Yeah, and so, um. I've been doing that for a while anyway, okay. so it's a fairly common practice and um, I'd, I'd try to, I, I used to do it more on tour, but then it just became, you know, a lot more complicated with time zones in mind and, and yeah. having like enough Wi-Fi connection and all that kind of stuff. Um, but so I've been doing it for a while anyway and so any downtime that I have between tours, it's something that I naturally gravitate towards just nice. to okay. fill my diary a little bit. And so. Um, I've I've booked a few of those in, which is great. Though I thought I would just, given how uncertain everything is, I thought it would, it would just be a nice gesture to, to offer some free tuition for the yeah. first couple of weeks. Um, and I thought for a, a two week period, that would kind of coincide with a lot of people's, you know, if people have to isolate themselves, mm-hmm. it's it with the length of time that they have to do that. So I've I've just started that two week period of of offering some free music lessons and. Ah. Um, and what, what's interesting is the second that I advertised it online and saw a few of the responses coming in, I, 
I immediately felt not that it's I didn't not I don't want this to sound selfish, but I immediately felt better about things. Generally speaking, yeah. um, just small mm. acts of kindness go a long way on on both sides of the yeah. the gesture. And um and and so that's been really cool, and it seems to have been well received. And um, what's funny is at any time that I've offered or advertised Skype tuition before, you know, I'd get maybe between zero and five responses <laughs> yeah. through a post. And because it was for free, and because everyone's at home, yeah. not doing anything, a, a couple of hundred come through, which is really wow. really exciting. Uh, a little bit overwhelming. So unfortunately, I, I was unable to obviously answer to everyone, but yeah. um, that initial response was, was really lovely. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so it's nice to have something like that to, to yeah. offer, which can be help people out and keep people occupied and, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, that's really, that. you know, that's really nice. And uh, hey, did you find like, you know, you're saying that these random acts of kindness that you that you get on both sides, you find that you're like more susceptible to like, um, like an emotional reaction to that right now because I definitely have been like as soon as anybody as, as I get any sort of like uh, yeah like see an act of kindness like that towards me or if I feel like I've done something I'm suddenly like a lot more emotional about it than I would be in any other circumstance usually I'm like oh that's nice they you know because I like for example my other podcast somebody a couple of people donated to me just to say hey you know really like the podcast I want, to, I want to see you keeping it going and i was just instantly like just like nearly crying <laughs> like yeah. welling up a little bit and just thinking like oh my god and i don't know if i'd have had that that like uh that reaction if yeah if i if it wasn't for this like crazy sort of horrible situation that the world's in i, don't know. I know i it's as if your people's capacity for those kind of things uh, it really opens up uh -huh. a lot, and um, and I think just because we're not our minds aren't cluttered with the kind of stuff that we're occupied with, there's there's no time or there's literally no space or need for certain things yeah. anymore, and so there's there's certain aspects of culture that can be, you know, can be cast aside, yeah. and um, you realize just how uh, redundant certain things are, and so I suppose all of that all of that is mm. can be completely overrided by uh i suppose checking in on the the people that are really important and if the, even if there's something really small that you can do to help mm. to, uh, to help out um that really does go a long way and um just having just having conversations like i just before this i got off uh, the phone with um just a, a friend of mine who's up in the northeast mm -hmm. and um and we were just talking about how crazy it's all mm -hmm. gotten and um and it just makes a world of difference just to have a chat. Yeah. Um, and, and also what's interesting is even if just, just having a small conversation or because um, uh, before I felt obliged to be um, to, to stay in, um, I, I dropped a couple of things off at a, at a charity shop just around the corner, like an Oxfam shop. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just happened to be particularly nice and polite. And it was just a really fleeting kind of dialogue and a really short exchange but even that in its sense just because there was no mention of the corona thing yeah. um because we were donating some old clothes that we didn't yeah. want anymore to it to it wasn't there was just something about it where you're just like oh i feel so much better now yeah. and you do you just need these little pockets of time where you're distracted by something uh, genuine yeah. and something important and isn't money related or work related yeah. it has nothing to do with, like being poorly or you know um and so yeah it's 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 really important mm, yeah and i like that idea that you're of, of of giving the free lessons to people who you know because there is going to be so many people around the world who really like love love your stuff and love what you do and like man like if you're in isolation you're not seeing your family and then you're getting a lesson with you know the sax player that you admire uh, you know for free or not for free it's just like yeah i can imagine that that is really helping people yeah i think uh particularly for for younger musicians nah. um who maybe haven't um i don't know maybe just generally speaking as a person if you're younger as well you haven't got certain um I don't know structure or stability or, or whatever it is or financial mm -hmm. independence or, or anything like that and so 
you know, if something like playing music is really important to you, you want to keep that going. And so yeah. at least that's something that we, can, that we can all do. We can still pick up our instruments and, and practice at home and play. And um, and so I know that there's a, that there are a ton of um, resources online and everything, but it's not quite the same as when you have yeah. like a, a one-on-one conversation. Uh, uh, yeah, for um, sure. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's, I'm, I'm very lucky that I have, I don't know, I, I don't want it to come from a, a place of arrogance, but to have something to, to offer someone, yeah. even if it is just of my time and to talk about music, it's, yeah. you know, r- regardless of whether or not I'm actually teaching them anything, if it, or if, if yeah. they knew about the five or not, it's just cool just to offer some time and, and have a, have a chat. Mm, yeah. And have you, so like as a, as a super busy musician someone who's you know like you said you're touring and doing loads of promo work and then touring and then recording and all this how does it feel to just suddenly have like space that you weren't expecting yeah it's a little bit weird and i suppose if i was to sit down and really think about it it would be quite unsettling because i i like being really busy and i like um you know i I don't really like being cooped up generally speaking and so given that this is what we're to do now it's yeah um pretty daunting if i was to really sit and dwell on things but um i suppose an upside is that it gives it, it gives me time to do things that i would have otherwise i've never had the time to do just little things around the house and yeah. um uh like it's, it's it sounds silly but like gardening we, yeah. we've got this quite small little courtyard that yeah. we're trying to, to work on and like just really simple things like planting some herbs and spinach and that kind of thing and actually seeing it grow is really <laughs> exciting <laughs> stuff like that that has nothing to do with the work i'd normally be doing yeah um it, it's it's been a really cathartic um way to pass the time um yeah. and, and also because i tour so often um that you know i it's nice just to have time at home with my girlfriend just to sit yeah. and watch a movie and just and just actually have time together mm. um and so I, I I try to focus on those things more than anything. I'm I'm not gonna, you know, I as much as I you know like anyone else, I'd I'd much rather be busy and to have a full diary and to be out the door and working long hours and everything. But I, you, you just have to you know focus on the positives that have come about from all of this. Um, and I mean by saying that, you don't overlook um the the hardship that a lot of other people are having to deal with is. Uh, a friend of mine whose his parents are really really poorly um, okay what was the virus um i Don't i know. think so also they were just that they already already had underlying things so it's hard to pinpoint mm-hmm. what's actually going on and he's you know he's essentially working around the clock just looking after them yeah and i mean that the, the stress behind all of that must be well is no doubt absolutely yeah. horrific and so i'm insanely lucky that i can try and use the time in a, in a more yeah. leisurely way i suppose it's it's um an insane privilege yeah. given how dynamic and horrible this could be you know what i mean yeah. uh but yeah so it, yeah. it's kind of it's, it's hard to answer because I, I i don't want to seem like i'm being too leisurely or, or too um flippant about everything because by no means is it easy for everyone else but i'm no I i'm know. very fortunate it gives me the time to be just to be at home and enjoy the, having some spare time, I suppose, and yeah. and to re, you know read some new books. Um, there there is an EP that I'm working on, ah. which I've had the time to to finish, and so I'm trying to be proactive with that and work on it remotely with other musicians and that kind of thing. And nice. um, you know, okay, right. What's the EP? Um, so. I started it ages ago and um, because writing original music has never been like a, a real source of income for me. It's never mm-hmm. uh, like I, I would never want to call myself a solo artist or anything like that because, mm-hmm. you know, there are people who do that properly who would just laugh if I said something like that. Um, and so it's always just been a labor of love. If I've got the time to sit down and chip away at some new composition ideas, then, uh-huh. then it's something that I, I really like doing. Um, but naturally touring can often get in the way of that and mm-hmm. uh, and so I, I think I started the EP maybe like 18 months ago right yeah <laughs> um, and that, that was like 
and bearing in mind it's like a four track ep <laughs> so given how some people are at writing music it's a pretty um pathetic effort at <laughs> starting and finishing but yeah it's just been something that i've been chipping away at for a while yeah and so you know for the past couple of weeks I've probably done more work on it than I have in the past six months or nine months or something. So that's been really cool. And so it's um, kind of hard to describe what it is musically, I suppose. It's in a nutshell, it's jazz music, but there's yeah. a little bit of everything thrown in. Um, uh, there's uh, musicians who play it out. Some of them are based in up in the Northeast, which is mm -hmm. great. There's some London guys. There's a, a musician and actually a, a Leeds College of Music alumni, I guy called George Solanos. Uh -huh. He's now based in LA. Um, me and him work together on a ton of different things. And, yeah. Uh, it's been cool to have some uh, like FaceTime sessions whilst he records it and that kind of thing. Yeah. And so that, that in the past couple of weeks, that's been a really cool way of, of um, I suppose, just hanging out with people yes. in a virtual and talking about music and, and working on something creative. That's great. Um, yeah. But so, you know, naturally, that's been a very therapeutic thing for me. And, um, I'm not sure how or when it will be released, but you know, it's, yeah. it just depends how the next couple of months go. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good because actually, you know, for myself, I, I I tend to go in and out of writing music and not writing music, and actually, I've found it very difficult to uh, to use this time to write. Every time I've sat down to do it, I think I've my brain just hasn't been in it. I don't know what that why that is, but uh, maybe maybe you know. I think everyone does everyone everyone does things differently, but I'm I'm hoping for my myself to accept this situation a little bit more soon and, and just to be able to go, All right, now it's time to work on that stuff, you know. But that's yeah. great that you know, you've been able to do that. How long how long have you been uh, uh like sort of self isolating or um maybe just shy of a week. Yeah. I yeah. think. Yeah. And so things yeah, so it's maybe last weekend, I suppose, with at least based on, on based on what I was seeing and the observations I was making, it was last weekend, mm -hmm. so it's the 22nd today, so like yeah. 20th, 19th-ish was when it things just seemed to take a turn, yeah. and um, everyone's uh, perspective kind of yeah. shifted a little bit. Um, and so, but prior to then, there was still a lot of talk about how things were going to be affected with regards to the, the work I had booked in yeah. leading up to the summer and everything, and so it was still very uncertain. And so I, I suppose I was looking for things to distract myself with. But I, d I do know what you mean about um, having the, the the kind of focus to work on something musically, because it, and especially for it to be really productive. Like yeah. it, it, it's kind of a common thing as well for musicians to be able to pick up their instrument and just sort of play a bunch of nonsense and call it practicing. Yeah. It's not that constructive. And I suppose it's easy for anyone to do that, but then to be genuinely productive it's it's quite hard because I, I suppose maybe it's you want to prioritize other things and and as much as it's um because playing music is quite it's quite a visceral thing anyway it, you mm -hmm. kind of go in it anyway and so you, i kind of don't want to do that too much if i'm in yeah. self-isolation you know what yeah, I mean? I'd rather yeah spending time with uh well just having some kind of a connection with people yeah as, as i can and and just like physical exercise because i I'm not like a, a big runner, but I, I love, I do enjoy going out for a yeah. run and trying to stay fit. And so being locked in, it's just, it, it will drive me a bit mad soon. Yeah. And so um, it's finding things that are productive, but, and, but still stimulating. I, I don't want to be too um, heavily focused on one mm -hmm. little project because it will just, I don't know how useful yeah. or healthy it will be for my, for my mind. Yeah, I know um, what you so mean. Exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. You know, actually, just um, moving away from uh, con cor coronavirus-related chat, actually, or actually sort of um, reversing what we were talking about, it'd be interesting to know what it was like for you, because um, we've just spoken about how you've gone from being a very, very busy touring musician to now self-isolating. But um, I'd be interested to know what it was like for you uh, when... You first, uh, when the 1975 first kicked off, and suddenly you were, you went from you know jazz, playing jazz and and teaching to suddenly bang your world tour. You're on world. You're touring the world. Be interesting yeah. to to know about you know how that how that was and 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, because what's interesting, I think the last time that me and you would have had any kind of real conversation, certainly in the same room, would have been just before all of it kind of kicked yeah. off. And so at the time, I was still living in Leeds. Yeah. Um, um, and it was, I was really happy with the work I was doing at the time. I was busy playing with a lot of the musicians that I'm sure you were playing with. And, yeah. Um, and you'll know as well as I that Leeds does have a really thriving scene because of that music college yeah. and um and so I I was I was you know very fulfilled but I, I felt like I was waiting for something significant to happen I think most yeah. young musicians are especially in their early 20s they, if, if you've gone through a music college or you're in a band or something yeah. and you know, you, you're kind of waiting for the, the, a break yeah so, you know break whatever whatever that means but, yeah. um and uh, and so when I was able to, when I had the opportunity to start touring, it was, it was, it was a really, really exciting time for me, obviously. And, and I think it was, <clears throat> it really ties in with the type of musician that I had in mind to try and become one day. Yeah. Like, so I, as I've studied jazz music and I, I still practice it, I'm, I'm not really much a jazz musician. I'm not like a, a jazz saxophonist. And I think it's quite apparent when you hear me play on anyone's yeah, know, music that no, I'm I'm quite a I've heard you play jazz man, that's not true. <laughs> um but the really my my dream kind of gig would be to so to um use little like small amounts of that jazz influence yeah. but within a pop thing and, and have the the kind of creative license to, to do that and to get away with it and for it to work stylistically yeah. and feel like I was really given that one yeah. in seventy five so it wasn't just a case of having this great opportunity to tour and to play in front of big audiences. It was, it really felt musically in keeping yeah. with what I was hoping to do one day. Yeah. Um, and for all of that to fall into place yeah. and for it to be a band that I'd, I, I was kind of listening to as well that, that a lot of their early EPs mm -hmm. because they were, friends, they've always been good friends of mine as yeah. well to see them on the up was really exciting yeah. for me and a lot of my, my circle of friends who were, who knew of them. Yeah. Um, and and so it was just I, I couldn't have wished for a better opportunity. Yeah. And and the fact that it's so far it's had, you know, I mean, relative to to my age, it's been a, a quite a significant length of time for me. It's yeah. it's been there has been a lot of longevity to the, to the sorry longevity to the opportunity, and um, it, it's just been absolutely incredible. Nice. Um, and so the you know. And I've been to parts of the world that I, I never thought I'd visit yeah. and um, met some really um, amazing and brilliant people who, I'd, who I've always really admired and mm -hmm. the opportunity to work with people that I idolize. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I really couldn't have um, written it. Any yeah. Better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember, um, cause I remember you chatting to me probably when we were both still in college about, Who's that sax player that he, who you you had some lessons with, and he does pop jazz? That Bob yep. is it? Bob Reynolds. Bob Reynolds. That's it. I remember you being like, "That is the thing that I want to do," and that like I love this guy, and I'm really glad that I've got these lessons coming up. And I remember when you guys when 1975 kicked off and you started doing all that, and I was seeing you playing on these big stages in front of <laughs> thousands of people. I was like, "Yeah, he did it. <laughs> nice." You know, it's a yeah. pretty much. That, I wouldn't right? want it. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose at a glance it kind of looks like that. I don't want to draw a comparison between me. Sure, you know, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but I, I know what you mean. Um, it's it's that thing of being a saxophonist and being, you know, pl playing with a pop band. Yeah, playing as a current music. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and having the, you know, I, I get to play saxophone solos yeah. with a big band in, in arenas, and um, I don't know of many. No people i don't know of many people who get to do that who are, you know other young saxophone, saxophone players it's it's quite a rarity and so i'm i'm just insanely fortunate for all of that to have fallen into place it's, yeah it's crazy yeah it's great, um, so um not to put a put a downer on it <laughs> but like now so we don't know what's going on right we don't know what the next well we sort of know that i guess we know like we've got three months at least and perhaps a year of of maybe not being able to perform 
<laughs> what what do we do about that? What do you reckon? I mean, I don't want you you don't have to have all the answers, don't worry. <laughs> but you know, it's just <laughs> such an interesting time. Stressful mm-hmm. time if you make your living playing music and especially if you're on the breadline, etc. But it's just like there's so like it's gonna have to there's gonna musicians are gonna have to find a way to survive and to keep playing and people are gonna want to hear music as time goes on. I know right now we're in a real critical period and actually maybe the it, we're not as needed. But I think as time goes on, people are still gonna want to hear music. They still want to go and see gigs, and we don't know whether they're gonna be allowed to do that. What what do you think's what do you think's gonna happen? I mean, I mean, I. I have no idea. Um, and I think it's the uncertainty, which is the, the most terrifying part of, of all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I suppose for, the, you know, as individuals and as musicians, there's still things that we can do to, to generate an income. Mm-hmm. And I think utilizing online platforms is, is an obvious way of doing that because you can do that remotely from anywhere. And, you know, if you have the means to teach people and to share ideas, then that's, then that's brilliant. Yeah. That has a lot of, um, holds a lot of value, um, and also with, given how connected the world is, we can still we can still share new music, albeit it's not live. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, and again, we can we can make music in our own homes. We can record things in our own homes, and um, and and take advantage of, of of working remotely and to collaborate. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of where we are. But yeah. I, I, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I just don't know, and I don't think anyone does. And it's, it's certainly, if people are, are depending on finding um, a sense of fulfillment and happiness from live performances, then yeah. um, I think we'll have to, you know, direct our, our attention towards other things, which are going to have to be things that we can enjoy in our own homes and in our own our own space. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's I, just interesting because even now, like with uh, with the with the things that are being put in place. So I we I'm in a in a in a band that does uh, mainly sort of uh, a sort of modernized version of Django Reinhardt stuff and yeah. um, called the London Django Collective. We we've, we've been we were planning to do a live stream, but actually we're thinking now that well, and actually pretty much definitely now we can't do that because we can't even we we shouldn't even be in the same room as each other anyway. So it's like. Yeah that that that's the thing that's uh you know if we could do live if we can do live stream gigs that would that would make it a bit easier but i don't even think that that like you know i'm not sure if we should be doing that yeah you know it's crazy well that's the thing i mean i I don't know how quickly things will resolve themselves and i know there's there's these different um time periods that are being discussed like you said it could be up to a year maybe it'll be months hopefully it is Three months or within three months before you know we can actually reopen businesses and yeah. you know and just be outside together for a yeah. little bit yeah um, but but I don't, I don't know man yeah. I, I wish I had some answers but I, anywhere that i'm looking at it seems it's very very uncertain yeah yeah it is uncertain i, I don't i don't sorry i don't i don't mean to like try and get you to to answer all the questions that we're all we're all thinking about but you know it's just it's just interesting to to think about it. I don't really know. I don't. I st- I also don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I have. I'm I'm pretty positive that, you know, we'll be able to get through it, and and I'm sure that there will be a point in this in the near future that we will be able to have mm-hmm. gigs going on. But you know, I think to be honest, I think at the moment we have to accept it, and I think that people are finding it very difficult to accept it. It's just even people in the UK are finding it difficult to accept it. Not just musicians. A few people, and you know, there's my people who live above me pretty sure they've been having parties like every night this weekend i'm thinking like what are you doing what's going yeah. on like we're not supposed to do this no. but, but yeah <laughs> anyhow man so um i think that's a that's a nice that was a nice ni- nice one i think we've 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 got we've got it covered with that thanks mm-hmm. so much for um for chatting to me no, of course it's been me. really nice to just chat to you anyway you know and- I know, and I think um, this type of thing is uh, certainly not just amongst musicians, but just amongst people anyway. It's, it's this kind of thing is quite important, I think. Yeah. And um, it's going to be a very um, therapeutic, very cathartic thing that people are going to be depending on. Um, yeah. 
in, you know, these little kind of video chats. And like last night, me and uh, four or five of my friends, we had this, you know, like a group call uh, that you can. Yeah. Uh, and so we all, we went to the pub. So we <laughs> sat at our little virtual pub uh, uh, together. Did um, it feel, did it feel like you were at the pub? Uh, no, but no. It, you know what I mean? It was, it was good enough and it was just, you know, to have, you still felt like you you were in one of those companies. Yeah, no, I've, I've had the same thing. I quite liked it. You know, it's, the problem is, is like, it's quite hard to, the thing that's hard with, uh, with like video online stuff, these, these sort of calls, it's like, it's quite hard to have moments of like silence. I think we're going to have to learn if we're going to start hanging out with people on Skype and whatnot, <laughs> we have to learn to, ha to just let it hang. Cause at the moment, you know, if I was to, if we were to just have some silence, like now, it'd be like super awkward. I'd feel really awkward. I feel like you might feel really awkward. But I think we need to get used to that, you know? If we're going to start hanging out with everyone, mm. we just need to get used to like having awkward silence, just drinking your pint, just looking over there and, and I don't know. <laughs> I know, mate, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, nice to chat to you, man. Um, I'm just going to... Thanks for listening to Locked in the Green Room. Please subscribe on YouTube or any of the podcast apps that you might be listening to this on. Um, yeah, and please come again. Yeah.